So about that analysis yesterday, let's talk about what's likely to happen next. Well, well, people of camera number two, welcome back to Crown Pseudo Cave and a very special morning this morning as we have a shit ton to talk about, a metric shit ton to talk about with good old price action right now. A little bit of a heavier statement that I started off with this, this video with, so please excuse the arrogance. Uh, it's not my intention, but I do, I am quite excited about what's to come. Anyways, um, or what's likely to come, I should say, as there's never 100% guaranteed rate. Anyways, um, with regards to what I want to say before we get into the actual analysis, I want to remind myself to say a massive thank you for the overwhelming amount of well wishes uh for uh from from the community here it's been I, I it's been quite literally quite literally overwhelming i don't really have like the right words to express myself when saying thank you but uh, i suppose the best way to start off would be saying a massive massive thank you um it's really meant a lot and uh and it's been it's also been it's also been a lot more than i thought it was gonna be i mean jesus christ it's, shit fucking hurts man they <laughs> cut up my whole goddamn back anyways um we got a lot to talk about with not only price action, but also uh, all the programs which are on sale for the next day ending tomorrow. We may extend it a little bit because, well, now that everyone's on fucking quarantine, I suppose people actually have the time to dig deep and dirty into that sort of content. But as always, with all the programs of which we have three major ones, uh, watch the videos accompanying them on the links below in the description of this video. They will go into much more detail in explaining who they're for, who they're not for, and how to get the most out of them. But I would say at the outset, for all those programs, the biggest the biggest component with taking the value from them is making sure that you one have the dedication to you know put the time and effort into it because well what you get out is what you're going to get put or what you put in is what you'll get out maybe backwards spoken. Um, and then also they're very very long, so you want to have the amount of time to invest in them uh, before if you're actually going to get anything out of it. So now that we're all on, quor uh, on quarantine and Crown's Quarantine Cave, it's actually maybe not the biggest issue, but I do think that it's very, 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 very important to talk about that. Um, of course, the uh, and I'll do like just a very brief synopsis. The Neophytes program is for d complete beginners, complete fucking beginners. Like if you don't know what the red and green button do on the exchange, that's the program that I, uh, that I suggest. As always, take advantage of the free content first because it perhaps could get you all the way through those points anyways. Um, and then if that's not you know what you're looking for, then perhaps consider one of those um, and then on top of that, uh, the TA program is the next evolution of that, going much more into detail, the whole evolution of all those concepts in about 40 hours worth of video content, um, plus the plus realistically, you're going to want to, you know, reass reassess the concepts as time goes on and as your as your understanding, you know, deepens. Um, and then, of course, the options program, which is even more complicated than those first two combined, uh, much more than that, because there's a big there's a big learning curve with learning options, of course, as uh, first we have to we have to spend the first like fucking five to ten hours not five to ten hours but about you know five uh five, five hours i'd say just getting through uh what is this what are we looking at just going through all of the, you know the, the the different metrics and what they mean um anyways other than that i think it's time to get into the analysis right now again watch the videos to make sure that it's actually applicable to you if uh and that is going to be the best way to decide anyways uh looking at the crown trading application right here which can be found at app.crowntrading.net and it is free we do see that open interest which by the way is being reskinned which i'm really really happy about and we have so many more updates coming and we actually did just get another uh update pushed last night so you can now log, log out of your account you can you're free you're free to go and uh what do you know open interest coming down from yesterday so remember yesterday we said that it would bitcoin was likely to move to the upside i said about 6600 65 50 ish region is where I was looking towards. Obviously, Bitcoin overshot that by a couple hundred bucks. But at the end of the day, we did get the rejection that we we're looking for. And the open interest was the key critical component to understanding that open interest was essentially remaining flat while Bitcoin was rising up, volatility and volume going down over the you know over the last uh, week and a half. And what do you know? Massive fucking rejection. And that's going to really lead us up to the next major opportunity that I think is going to be coming this week. So with regards to that, let's get into the price action right now. Or actually, is there anything else that I want to reference before we get in there? Um... Now, I, th I think I think that's about what we want to talk about. Okay, cool. So here we go. Bitcoin on a six hour. No, let's go to a daily Bitcoin. And, and this is <laughs> I will start off this analysis with the most simplistic type viewpoint, which I think is probably likely to play out and pretty much in line with what we said yesterday. So let's 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 lay the groundwork for this starting off on the daily um bitcoin did get or actually, actually we need that one right there let's take off these guys right here yeah that guy right there um 
Bitcoin did get the death cross uh, about a week ago on the 13th of March, so a little bit more than a week ago. But close enough is close enough. Now, price action was very far away from the death cross when it did happen. These are exponentials, by the way, the 55 and the 200. So they do carry a significant amount more of weight. Now, we were looking for a test up to one of the next major moving averages uh, on, you know, on, on the lower periods, like the 10 or the 21. We got both. And obviously, we got the 21 yesterday, which was fucking brilliant. And, um, and looking for a rejection within that region. I was saying yesterday that Bitcoin was likely to move up to about 6,600-ish region. We obviously overshot that a little bit, but that's okay here. And actually really going to tie into the analysis quite well. So with the rejection that we got yesterday, Bitcoin printed a massive long-legged doji dildo forcing us back down below 6,000 bucks, which we said was likely to happen. I said that it was probably going to come in this next week price action. Again, my timing is never is, is fucking garbage, but it doesn't matter. That's why we talk about levels. We broke the key critical level at 6,150, initiated that move back down to the 200 simple on the weekly, which I do believe will get very likely retested. That was that, that was a 5,600 risk region right there. Again, timing of this doesn't really matter. Levels, that's, you know, that's what I feel can be done over time. And now, since we have that piece of price action in place, there are multiple things to be considered of that really lead on to this next weeks of price action, which I feel like is going to be the next big opportunity. So with yesterday's long legged doji doodle being, being closed like this, we can make this as simple as possible. And some, and some, some, and, and that's not to say that like people can't understand more deep concepts, but sometimes you can, you know, the most simplest thing is the right thing. And when we have a long legged doji dildo, right? Dil doji dildo like this, if I can even get my words out fucking properly right now, um, then it gives us a very, very easy trade opportunity. If we trade below the low of this, uh, of this doji ish dildo, this will operate as our nice local high. And I'll be looking for a move all the way back down to the low 5,000s, so maybe even upper 4,000s, just as we said was likely yesterday after Bitcoin gets rejected in the upper 6,000s. And I feel like I'm being a little bit arrogant with the way that I'm saying these, uh, with the way that I'm saying these numbers. It's not my intention. I just want to fall for the people who have, who first happen to give a fucking. Also, I've been here for a little bit of time because we've been talking about this scenario uh, over this past week. Anyways, um, with regards to that, that would actually really line up well from a momentum loss sort of standpoint because not only are we getting rejection uh, off these major moving efforts right here after getting the death cross running over here, which is pretty damn common. Although I would say that this death cross is not going to be like a very, very super nasty one. I think it's just going to force us back down a low side. Of the range. The reason why I say that is because we actually do have hidden bearish divergence now in place on the daily right here, coming in back from our breakdown um, right in over here on the 10th of March from when Bitcoin was literally above about 8,000 bucks. If we compare this point and this point and, conf and confirm this as a local high, which will be confirmed if we move below the low of this doji dodo, then that will be confirmed as a local high. We can we can also declare that, <laughs> like declare it, as, uh, as hidden bearish divergence. And I'd at the very least look for a move back down to about 5,100-ish region and probably probably even potential to go a little bit lower than that. I feel like we'd probably have some wick fishing down into like the upper 4,000s most likely as well. Um, now, keep in mind also that uh, daily stokes are going to be testing the edge of the bearish control zone today. I would look for I would look for counter trend pressure within that region as it is quite common. So I do like how these things are lining up right now. And, and keep in mind that all major moving averages still have a negative slope right here. So pressure is still to the downside. And while I don't think that this death cross right here is going to like is going to, you know, be the fucking like the the harbinger of death and despair, as you typically see, because it's it's not it's not super perfect. Um, I would look for it at the very least to put Bitcoin back to down to the lower end of the re uh, 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 of the range. Let me go back on over here. Sorry, this is uh, the more relevant chart, I think. Um, anyways, uh, to me, this is this is very, 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 very uh, indicative of short-term redistribution right in over here. Not only do we have a head and shoulders on the four-hour total time frame, which, by the way, has a neckline right around 6150-ish region, which we are going to be in danger of breaking on this next four-hour total closure, um, although it's still about three hours and 33 minutes away. So. A lot can happen in that amount of time, but uh, assuming that we do get a four hour total closure, especially below 6150, or even if you want to be more conservative, 6100, I would look for another move back down into the middle of uh, uh, into the middle of the five thousand dollar region, somewhere right around uh, the wick low of yesterday, 5600 to 5550 ish region, which is which should line up with our blue box territories that we've had in here, coming in back from yeah, right in over here from our last little breakout. So nicely done. Although I would flip this around and be a little bit more conservative with it and look at that fucking beautiful. Anyways, um, let me actually raise this one, raise this one down, lower this one down. Maybe it's a proper way of explaining that one in, in English, and um, and uh, and a couple things here as well. 
So we don't, or sorry, not only do we have a head and shoulders on price action, which is good enough for me usually, um, but also on, on four hour RSI, you can see that we are also playing out some major hidden bearish divergence. To be fair, it is, you know, from much further back on over here. So it's not like as, as strong, but can be, but, but putting that in line with also the daily as well, I do think that that, you know, has the downwards effects and we do see the daily play out, which the four hour is going to mediate. And, um, you know, all the other high, all the time frames in between are probably showing like variations on on that um, is what I'd imagine. But the key critical component would be trading back below down this region right here. Four hour RSI is back below the exponential. So I like that for some added downside pressure. And you can also do, and you can also see that we do have a nice trend line forming right here as well. In fact, on four hour RSI, we have we we have what seems to be a rising channel and a rising channel typically does break out to the downside. So I do, the problem is, is that, you know, on a rising channel, you, you don't really get the timing component of that, but I would look for another test back down into this region, probably initial bounce off this region. The bounce probably is, you know, probably gets sold into, and that's when we break down below. And that's when Bitcoin, I would imagine, likely goes down into the lower $5,000 region upper $4,000 region, um, probably uh, in this next week of price action. In the interim though, uh, what would I be looking for? Um, I actually do, th or, or at least I am defensive right now against Bitcoin, having another move back up to test around like 64, 6,500 in the interim. But as long as Bitcoin is, is closing at the very least two hour deltas below that region, I am I, uh, I am bearish looking for, looking for further uh, downside action. Uh, but this is kind of no man's land right here. So as long as we're below this region, I'm, you know, the buys for myself is bearish, but we can float up all the way over here, test this region um and i'd actually be looking for positions on that and look at that as an opportunity um and it's not until we actually start closing two hour deltas above this region where i think that something new could be going on uh, could be going on and bitcoin is likely going back above seven thousand. but i think that yesterday was a major massive sell and um and i think that a lot of people are getting like very prematurely excited uh the reason why i say that is because on the weekly i think it becomes very visually apparent that even if bitcoin were to bottom in this current area that you see it on even if it were to bottom on this current area that you uh, again very like slowing down my words deliberately now uh even if bitcoin were to bottom on this area that we're currently on right now i don't think that it would just reverse today, tomorrow, the next day, I think that it would likely take, you know, at least another month or two of price action, uh, probably month, um, you know, you know, at the very soonest. And I know timing is not, you know, is, is not something that I really think can be done, but I do feel quite strongly about that. Um, I think that it's incredibly likely that Bitcoin is going to come back down and fish around at the very least a 200 simple, which we got yesterday at about 55, 50 ish region and probably even below it. Um, and here's what I can say now a little bit more aggressively. Um, because CMEs did close their weekly above that critical level, they closed at about 62.10, I would likely look for spot price action to close around that region as well tomorrow uh, when the weekly closes at, uh, I believe it's now 8 p.m. Eastern time. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. It might, it might still be 7, but uh, I believe it is 8, 8 Eastern Standard Time now. Um, so if that does happen, I do think that the bottoming, uh, or sorry, the the case for a for uh, for a Bitcoin bottom in this region is going to be um, relevant. But I really want to see spot follow through on that. If spot closes below the 200 simple, and and let's now we're talking about a little bit more high time frame stuff. So to 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 again deliberately uh, delineate between the lower term time frames, the medium time frames, and the high and the macro time frames, we're now talking about higher time frames, uh, airing into the territory of macro time frames. If if Bitcoin closes this next weekly below the 200 simple, that's when um, I do not think that this is going to be a bottom at all whatsoever. And we will be headed down, or sorry, at least a case for a bottom here is 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 completely null and void. We'll have our first open and close below the 200 simple for the first time in Bitcoin's history. And at the very least, I'd look for a retest of the 3,500 number um, down around here from a, you know, from a macro scale. Uh, doesn't mean it's going to happen like the next week exactly after that could. I don't, you know, I don't really have a strong opinion on that, but I'd generally be looking down and I do th strongly believe that Bitcoin would not just test 42 but would probably break below there um, and head down to about 3,500, at which point I'd look for the next potential bouncy bounce territory. Um, by the same token, if Bitcoin closes above the 200 simple tomorrow, which I think could be likely because we did see that CME is closed at 6210 and they should usually line up with each other more or less. Um, 
uh, then then we would be closing above both the 200 simple and the 200 X benchmark average if that if, if if that were to happen and at that point I do think still that Bitcoin would actually come back down and fish around the 200 simple and even the low 5000s but I think that that would be a potential bottoming area and if Bitcoin does the third wildcard situation so that there there's three specific situations with how tomorrow can end um, where we close above the 200 simple but below the 200 X benchmark average which would be anywhere between um, um, 55, 50, and about 5,900, which is certainly very much possible as well. Um, then I would, I, 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 I would basically be neutral off that. I don't, um, I wouldn't have a bias between upside or downside. I would still say that we'd very likely uh, swipe the downsides again, like the low five thousand dollar number, upper four thousand dollar number. Um, but the case for a bottom could still potentially be made. Could potentially be made, but it would not be as strong as if Bitcoin closed above both the two hundred simple and the two hundred X benchmark average. So a lot of contingencies there. But we're only talking about the weekly close uh, for right now. Um, and now we're going to go. Back down to the lower term time frames and kind of sh uh, show how the you know how that picture is all meted against each other and let's go over here to the 12 hour um starting off with this 12 hour looks like a very obvious uh, lo uh local top to me in fact the 12 hours already confirmed a local top as far as i'm concerned and what do you know we do have hidden bearish divergence uh, certainly very much confirmed here as well between i mean shit, we could go all the way back on over here in fact this was six of march uh six of march when bitcoin was literally like nine above nine thousand bucks so we have one two three drives and on top of that we likely have a trend line um uh, further confirming this and what do you know so, uh, so, uh, somewhere down around here as well very 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 low Lovely. Um, so I do like how that all lines up with each other. And I do think that that that, that further confirms the fact that uh, this this area right here is going to be a local top, which is going to further carry on over into the daily. And we are going to come back down at the very least to 5550 and probably even all the way down to about 5150 ish region down around here. Um, let me actually go back to my GDAX chart. It's a little bit cleaner. Um, so <clears throat> so how uh, or sorry what's the next trade that i'm kind of looking for right here um i want to see bitcoin take out the last low of that last 12 hour dildo right here or, or daily whatever you want to call it 56 57 that would that would completely confirm this as a local high once again on a daily and initiate that hidden bearish divergence which i believe is going to be good enough to bring us down uh down to the low five thousands um i hold on to that view as a trader as long as bitcoin is again below this blue box right here more aggressively speaking and conservatively speaking i could say basically above yesterday's high um, uh, 6,900 ish region, although we could also move this one down as well. Um, and use it on a four-hour dollar closure basis, which I think probably does get it anyways at around 6,700. So as long as we're closing four-hour dollars below there, zero, you know, zero reason to be uh, looking for continuation of the upside at all whatsoever. Um, and I'd say even, you know, even being more aggressive in this, in this blue box right here between about 64, um, what is it? 6450 and 6550. Uh, I think, I, I think probably gets it as well. So if we do even trade above like 6550 ish region, I think it would be quite likely that Bitcoin is, 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 is going to work its way back up into the $7,000 and we're going to see a reversal sooner rather than later. I think that's incredibly unlikely to happen, but that would be the sort of the triggering event that I'd look for to have that downstream of effects leading us up into that region. Now, what we can do here here is we can look at the probabilities chart and uh, and come up with and come up with likelihoods of of which one of these areas gets you know broken first essentially and well seeing as we're kind of testing the downside support of this one for the more preliminary areas holding up this uh this uh, head and shoulders right here i do think that is a little bit more likely that we, I, I think it's going to be a little more obviously likely that we're going to be moving on to the downside but let's come up with a measure move on this one and what do you know if if, if we do play out the head and shoulders target it would put us back down to about 54 um 54 50 ish region so you know what i think i was actually wrong about flipping this blue box around it should still be like this i think that's still actually accurate um so nice anyways um Anyways, let's go over here to our probability chart again with the critical areas in mind. So I do think that the more aggressive area to the top side is actually completely fine. You know, I don't think I'd really have to wait for like 6,700 to get closed above on like a four hour dildo for me to get bullish again. Um, above about 6,550 at the very most, I think it's probably good enough. And even 6,450 is like really get, you know, really getting in there. By the same token of the downside, a lot more easy from the lower term time frames as uh, 6,050 at a more conservative rate and 6,150 ish region right here um, for a more aggressive target target bringing us back down likely short term to uh 5900 ish region probably small bounce there and then continuation down to our next blue box at uh, 54 50 to 55 uh, 50 ish region so let's go on over here and check out what our probabilities are um and let's see okay so let me make sure that i am looking at the right thing right now 
All right, inputs. Um, okay, so actually 6055 is still relevant, funnily enough. And what do you know, what is the probability that we actually do close below there? <clears throat> well, 58 and a quarter percent, which is pretty fucking high. This is on a four hour, by the way. So this is a very low time frame showing this right now. So it's only going to get higher when we go to a higher term time frame, of course. And, uh, and this one's going to be closing in three hours and 22 minutes, which is also going to be synonymous with the next 12 hour dollar closure. So let's go look at this one as well. Um, uh, closing again at the same time. And what do you know? A little bit higher probability, 53 and a, 53 and a half percent. Um, to the downside and more importantly we do see that the rings are once again squeezing to the downside here so i would have a bias to the downside and i do think that uh it is very interesting to see that 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 the bottom side of the first innovation is coming in right around about 5700 ish region which would be more or less around our next kind of bouncy bounce territory so perhaps i should actually be moving this down a little schmidgen um, i have it at about a little bit of a 5800 ish region uh from a from a historical volatility percentile looking at expected moves it would suggest maybe slightly lower than that but these things will shift around as time goes on and you can see that the projection of this on these cones which is projecting um, future probabilities for these regions um, is going to show that the that the bottom side of the first aviation is actually going to be coming in at this next 12 hour total closure a, a little bit lower than that right around about 55 50 ish region which funnily enough lines up exactly with this blue box right here so I fucking love how all these things are agreeing with each other right now because that is typically when that's typically when tentacle analysis actually works <laughs> that crazy hocus spoke is bullshit anyways um anyways uh we should talk about the top side as well of course um the top side uh key critical area once again is about 60 let's just call it 6500 cut it to the middle right there um and let's see okay can you do it hey show it to me um okay so hmm actually um, inside range going to be 23%, outside range going to be 77%, actually a little bit more than that. Interesting. Very interesting. Maybe I'm looking at this wrong because, uh, oh, oh, it's because I'm doing it on a, on a, uh, on a, on a, on a range. I really want to just be looking at a single, at a single, uh, price target, unfortunately. Um, hmm. Let's see. We can do something like this actually, maybe 6450 and then 6550 right here. Let's see if this uh, helps out that case, because I think it likely should. Let's do it one more time. It has a little bit of a lag. There we go. Mm, actually, no, not so much. Okay, so maybe I, I probably need to talk to Bali about this just to make sure that we're on the same page and looking at the exact same at the exact same stuff. But even just looking at it from a standard deviation uh, perspective, you can you know you can come up with the, with those same sort of areas, and it would be a lot more likely that we actually do break to the downside because we are quite literally resting on that support right now. So between uh, where we are right now and the bottom side of the first deviation, that is about six. Uh, sorry, that would be about sixty-eight percent divided by two, so about thirty-four percent. Um, that we do close below, which is, which is pretty good, actually, pretty, pretty damn good. Um, anyways, oh, I should also mention that uh, my um, I've been I've been very bad with getting back to my uh, my Discord inbox. I apologize about that. It's been a very strange and bizarre last like forty eight hours, or not forty eight hours, but like the last three days, seventy two hours maybe. Um, and I'm doing my best to get back to everything, but uh, I will be a little bit slower due to, well, <laughs> fuck it. Due to my back being cut the fuck open. Jesus Christ, man. Um, my, uh, Elsa showed me a picture of it yesterday, and I literally want to barf. <laughs> it's so fucking gross. Um, anyways, uh, okay, cool. Alrighty. So, what else do we want to look at while we're while we're here? Um, okay. So, another big thing that I'm looking at as well is is the interaction between the yellow 21 and the green 55 right here on the four hour. Um, these two guys, I would look for as another signal as well. If Bitcoin gets the or sorry, if these two moving averages get very very close to each other, almost hinting at the bullish cross of themselves, but at the last second falls right back on through. Again, another very obvious signal that we're going to be getting going back down to the like the 5500 ish level at the very least. I would say. Remember that is going to be around the weekly join and simple. So I like how all these things line up with each other, and um, and realistically for the next big, uh, you know, big obvious thing, we're going to have to wait until uh, tomorrow's closure, of course. But um, you know, that's what we're talking about all these different situations and sort of the triggering um, price points of them in the interim. Um, the most bullish thing that Bitcoin could do right here is hold a little bit sideways for the next couple of days and then and then work its way back up to like 6700 bucks. But uh, I think that's a little bit unlikely to be done. Um, we do see a four hour stokes going to be headed down. Uh, three hour stokes going to be headed down. Two hour hourly stokes are actually meeting a meeting resistance trend line right here right now. 
and I'd imagine two hour probably down as well. Yeah, they are down right now. It looks like uh, I have too many trend lines going on right here, but I do want to show that also there is a very, a very, 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 very important trend line on, I believe the four hour it was, which has been holding this one up uh, for quite some time. And uh, when you find some that works, stick with it. And this one would be coming in right at the edge of the bearish control zone. So if we do kind of nosedive our way down there, uh, probably will be tested by actually around tomorrow's weekly closure. So very, 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 very good that these things line up with each other. And uh, this one's been the one to buy for the last, uh, I don't know, for the last couple of weeks, it looks like. So I do like that, at least for now. <clears throat> Okay, anyways, what else do we wanna talk about? Um, let's go over to the two day. I'm curious how this one's operating right now. Yeah, we have a two day. Okay, so the two day is a little bit nasty here. Um, now, I do think it's possible that we will get another test up to 6,600-ish region, but remember, that's gonna be where the two day uh, 10 simple is coming in around. And here's the thing, if we get another rejection around this region, you know, uh, let me put back on these blue boxes. Um, the blue box right here, our, our more aggressive one coming in about a little bit less than about the uh, 65, 50-ish region. Um, if we do test that region and it does reject again, this is not just going to be a rejection of the 10 simple, which, by the way, all these major moving averages have very, 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 very uh, aggressive negative slopes. But uh, also, we are going to very likely confirm very soon a death cross on the two day exponential moving averages. The reason why this is a big deal, though, the reason why this is a big deal is because this this retest backup on, on over here that we got yesterday if it gets rejected again and we get that death cross that actually would be a pretty damn good efficacious one as bitcoin rallying up as we get the as we get the test if it gets rejected that's giving us that's essentially giving us clarity on what the bots and algos who actually move this market are doing they're going to be selling that area and they're going to switch all their buy programs to swap to sell programs as soon as we get the death cross on this region which is going to be marked by the next rejection of this proverbial area if it does happen so that 65 50 ish region very, 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 very critical. If Bitcoin gets another rejection there again, I would very, very much likely look for, I'd very much likely look for, Jesus Christ, Crown, get your English right. Um, I, I must sound like a goddamn moron. It's all these pain pills, I swear, except for the fact that I always sound like this anyway. So <laughs> maybe a little bit of a bad excuse. Um, but but that would be a very good efficacious death cross as we'd essentially be testing it the test the test is rejected I'm going to switch all the bot and uh, the bot and algo uh, buy programs and sell programs and i'd look for similar price action to what the last time that we got the death cross uh to happen over the long term something like this something like this back and over here see the two-day death crossing um in september of 2018 you get your test right here it gets rejected boom everything's sold down and then bitcoin just gets a series of lower highs putting in the sending triangle here for the next few months and then massive move to the downside that is obviously maximum pain but you know in this market right now maximum pain doesn't uh you know this would be the time to do it i suppose um other than that do we have any other examples of death crosses on the two-day we do back on over here on October 2014, uh, uh, gets tested right here on the uh, on the on the two-day 55 boom rejection, and you know again this one was just coming into consolidation phase, and that was leading up to our next major. I mean, shit, if you want to take it from 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 last test to next down, about 64% down, right? I don't think that we have any other examples of it other than that. Yeah, we don't. Um, and then this one over here, obviously, going to be another like 50-ish percent down, I'd imagine, just because. Um, well, we're starting up, starting above like 7,000 and going all the way down to 3,000. Yeah, about 57 and a, and, and a half percent. I am curious what it would look like if Bitcoin were to rally up in this region. And again, I'm making assumptions here. Major assumptions being made. Hey, I'm making major assumptions. A lot of things need to happen before this happens. And it's probably not even happening like... And even if they do get ticked off, they're not going to happen like today. But let's just let's just play around with numbers and see what happens if we shave 50% off the current price action. That put us back down around our $3,000 lows. And I do think that um, if Bitcoin does get this rejection right here and we get the death cross on this confirmed, um, that will be in the cards. That will very much be in the cards. Yes, I do think at the very least, Bitcoin would, would, be, would be forced back down to the low side of the range, upper 4,000s, lower 5,000s, tentatively speaking, let's call it like 4,800 to 5,100-ish region. Um, but there there would be a legitimate legitimate possibility that we should do uh, head much lower than that um, historically speaking that has been the that has been the effect uh, going over to the three day um, we rejected the we rejected the 200 simple moving average as it is right now of course the three day has not closed just yet I, I think it closes tonight um, let me confirm yes it does close tonight if it closes like this this is a fucking rejection uh, closing um, you know if if you have a if you have a dildo that travels up about in this case, 36%, and then only retains about 16%, literally less than half of it at the time of closure. 
there's nothing fucking bullish about that at all uh, whatsoever. That was that was a rejection. That is that that uh, that is telling you that this area is getting distributed on, and it should be a very 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 strong resistance going onwards and forwards from here. Um, but again, a lot can happen between now and and, and the daily drill closure. Um, so fair enough. But this is also a rejection that's coming off of you know a decent amount of volume. Uh, from a three-day perspective, to be fair, um, remember that on the lower-term time frames, volume has been essentially contracting uh, quite steadily, even with yesterday's upwards price action right here. Look at this. Look at this. What's most of the volume on? If we were to really go down to the lower-term time frames, most of the volume's on the selling. Most of the volume's on the selling. This is all distribution right here. Uh, major, major volume on the selling, actually. Or I mean, it's, it's, it's not major volume on the selling, but you can see that we still have this nice steady decline going from left to right here. And, you know, what are we doing you know, over time? Maybe we're doing something like this where we're making some sort of like massive uh, bear flag. You know, perhaps uh, you don't really see Bitcoin play out too many bear, bear flags, to be fair. But uh, volume signature would confirm. Uh, t uh, d uh, definitely the shape and size would confirm as well. Um, and also underlying market dynamics would confirm mainly looking at the uh, at, at the open interest and its interrelationship between price action going up, uh, open interest, you know, going down, essentially, I mean, remaining flat at best and going down at most. Um, and then also volume and volatility going down as well, which I believe vol volatility has been steadily declining. If we go here, maybe like a four hour, this should accurately represent it. Yeah, even with yesterday's spike up, we just met the moving average on this, which by the way, has a negative slope and is and has been coming down ever since we put in uh, March 13, the low right here. So this is all to be considered as one piece of the pie, I do think. And so we could make the argument for that. And let's come up with, and because we can make a, um, because, because we could make a, uh, a bear flag on that we can't actually come up with the measure move as well now this is going to be all sorts of fucked up so bear bear with me as i kind of make this out once again this might this might actually even be best seen on uh, bit mexico uh, something like this perhaps is what we're doing something like this it's not really it's not really well seen on like a four hour uh, what time frame was it on that, that was working uh, the hourly that's right yeah the hourly <laughs> funnily enough the hourly um but because that price action last week was just so strange but you know it, it does have three tests here that does make a trend line we do have two tests on the bottom side which is good enough to come up with events you know and again we are making assumptions here be very very clear assumptions being made hey we're making assumptions um you know if this were to play out this is technically a bear flag and we could make a massive measure move on this one um which i'm curious if it lines up with anything else uh on the more aggressive route for this and okay we're just gonna pretend like this didn't happen and uh i won't be talking if that that that's actually going down to 1500 let's also take a more conservative uh estimate on this one as well i'll just kind of um eyeball this one because we do have easy nice round numbers um but about uh, 1500 bucks um, below 5,000, that should be 3,500. So yeah, uh, that would point exactly towards our last 3,500 low. I mean, not exactly towards the last 3,500 low, but on a weekly closing basis, it was uh, right around here. So that's where I'd be looking towards. And I do think that um, that is within the cards. Uh, so longer term, that would be an area that I'm looking for. And remember, when we're talking about long term analysis, uh, let's look at a weekly at the very least. And the weekly stokes are coming down and they're coming down hard. They're fucking nosediving. And I do think that this trend line right here likely will be the next big bottom. The problem is, is that this is a weekly and we're probably gonna get all the way down around here. And this has been all of our bottoms actually, by the way, since that last 3000 or, you know, about $3,000 low right here. All of those price points on that trend line are correlated with this, with this, with this area right here, this area right here, and or sorry, this area right here before this $3,000 rally and this area right here before this, I think another $3,000 $3, rally or more, $4,000 rally actually. And, uh, and yes, we would be meeting that again if we do get back down around there. Also with uh, weekly RSI, this is not look like we have a bottom just from an RSI perspective. Um, you know, e you know, even the last market cycle, sorry, let's go to uh, one that has more price action history. Um, the last few market cycles have bottomed out uh, in te uh, technically in the more critical zone, right? Um, this was 2014, this was 2018 right here, and this was uh, 2011, 2012 right and over here, which to be fair, didn't really have enough time. But let's take this one step further. Let's go to a daily for a second. Um, we've never we've never seen a reversal uh, in Bitcoin's history with uh, on, on the macro, on the macro, and in, 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 in even on some of like the bigger moves as well without putting in daily bullish divergence. Uh, for example, this one right here has one, two, three drives, boom, nicely done. Uh, for example, this one right here before this $3,000 rally, obviously not the market cycle low, but a very nice low nonetheless, uh, one, two, three drives as well. Uh, on our last market cycle low at about 3,100, 
we see one, two, three drives as well. Boom, nice move up. Uh, the, well, the low is in and it took took a few months for it to move up, but it did of course move up at the end of the day. Um, then before that, obviously we have to go all the way back to 2014, 2015, where did we did we have bullish divergence on the last major low? Uh, yes, although you have to stretch it out a little bit more, but uh, it is certainly very much present. And did we have bullish divergence right here? Yes, indeed we did on this, on this cycle low. And did we have some right here on this cycle low? Kind of, although it is, uh, actually we did have, actually we did have major bullish divergence right over here on on the 2011 low uh, right around two dollars and 35 cents meditate on that my friends um, so yeah you know i i just want to show that it's very unlikely that bitcoin puts in like a major macro low uh, without putting in uh, bullish divergence at the very least on the fucking daily um so yeah um what else do we want to talk about um how long has this video been it's already been 35 minutes how is that even possible uh, let's see what the <laughs> all right and here's the real analysis so for all the people who have stuck around 12 hour stokes actually still headed up we're bullish <laughs> just kidding uh that can very easily change around 10 hours already turning around as well and they are um they're usually good enough on their own actually uh so i do think that bitcoin's maybe going to spend another you know uh, you know there, another dildo to kind of going sideways here and then assuming that we uh take out this this guy especially mm, i'd be looking for those next next price action targets to be hit let's talk about the upside we haven't even talked about the upside okay i'll i'll i'll, I'll end bitcoin on this um if bitcoin does get another four hour total closure above uh, 6700 i think it's i think it's unlikely but we should talk about it um then i would look for extension actually all the way up here towards 74 7500 um so fair enough Fair enough. You know, it, it, it will look good. Um, okay, let's go talk about the other market leaders. Uh, Mr. Buterall, how's Mr. Buterall doing? Uh, same sort of rejection that we see on Bitcoin. Um, we pretty much already got the move back down to the low side of the range that we were speaking about yesterday at 115-ish region. That's kind of overdone as far as I'm concerned. Um, so fair enough, it kind, of, kind of nasty here too. Um, we don't have the same sort of hidden bearish divergence to be fair because, because well, because uh, we actually did close on a higher high right here. Um, but other than that, I don't think, I don't really see anything that's too obvious on Mr. Buterall. Um, uh, four hour looks more bearish to me, but now we're getting down to lower term time frames. I'd probably, if, if Bitcoin breaks to the south side, I'd look for this one to retest around 121 region. Um, Litecoin, what's Litecoin doing? Also looks a little bit more on the bearish side as well. If Bitcoin heads back down at like the mid 5,000s, I'd be looking for her to head back down about 35 bucks. Um, daily, uh, if Bitcoin does test up to the 6,500 ish number first, so I'd look for a test towards uh, 43 bucks. Um, what else do we want to look at? I know that everyone's asking about fucking Ripple for whatever. I mean, all the altcoins do the same goddamn thing. There's there's nothing bullish about this weekly right here. There, there's absolutely nothing bullish about this weekly in any way, shape, or form. Um, weekly stokes getting stonewalled at the same area that I've basically sh uh, fucked all rallies since the uh, middle of 2019. Um, getting this high, getting this high, getting this high, and looking for continuation of the downside. No bullish divergence to be found even on a, or well, not even on a weekly, a weekly kind of a high time frame. Uh, what about a daily? Do we have any bullish divergence here? Nope, we don't. So you're fucked. Uh, no, just kidding. It's great. Keep investing. Um, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, EOS probably coming back down at like two bucks. Uh, maybe, maybe lower than that. Again, weekly here looks like continuation of the downside to me. I, this, this does not look good. At the very best, you know, maybe it does put in a local low here. But let's let let's talk about this scenario. What if what if uh, what if we see a lot of these majors put in local lows within this region? Because we do see a, kind of the same similar uh, chart as we see on EOS right here. Well, what are we making now? We're making literally a macro downtrend, or sorry, uh, descending triangle. Which I fucking love triangles in cryptocurrency land. They seem to work very 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 well. This one's this one's coming in all the way back from the ultimate high at uh, April 20, 2018 at about twenty three bucks. By the way, this is what the chart actually looks like on linear. Um, so not good either. You know, mit, you know, at best, not not uh, not at best, but you know, this would essentially ha make me have the um, the uh, what's it called the the bias that uh, you know you know even if it does hold on here and we do rally back up towards like three and a half, maybe even four dollars, it would be a major sell because this 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 one will be forced into a resolution relatively soon in the next couple months uh, for the macro picture, which has been building ever since again, you know, middle of, or sorry, early 2018, essentially. Um, what else do we want to look at? Uh, maybe GBDC really quick. GBDC has confirmed its weekly close below the 200 simple and 200 exponential mean average for what it's worth. Um, although, 
don't know how much I trust these moving averages because they haven't really been around for too long. Uh, daily has death cross running over here. Rejection even the 10 simple. Yep, I do think that we're getting ready for a move back down to our 18th of March uh, open, about six bucks. Let's see what 18th of March was for a spot price action. I'm curious where spot was trading at that time. Um, that was right, actually that was right here. So maybe around 54 to 5,500 ish region. So I do like that area as well. Um, 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 let's go check out uh, CMEs. I haven't really even done any analysis on them, I guess. Uh, CMEs, a rejection of all major moving averages. Death cross happening right here. And in the daily below the 10 simple. Yep, I do think that this next week we come back down to the mid to low 5,000s. Um, weekly is not going to have major moving averages populated here, but this does not look like a bottom to me on weekly RSI at all. Weekly stokes have plenty of room. Um, I really don't like a lot of the things that I'm seeing on this uh, on this chart. I mean, even the four, the four hour, the four hour looks like it pops back up to like 62. Maybe, wait, what the fuck? Oh, it's, 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 it's post market. So post market traded up to six to 6210, but, but realistically it actually closed, um, uh, at 5975 region. And there was a little bit of a pre uh, premium on this one. Um, so yeah, it probably does rally back up around like 63, maybe even 6,400. But, uh, I do think that once this, once this thing opens back up, hidden bearish divergence all the way going back from over I mean Jesus Christ all the way back from over 9,000 essentially um, and then of course this point right here all along the same trend line probably does come back down towards low 5,000s um, I, 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 I still I still stick with what I've been saying over this over the past few days I do think that that that, that area gets uh, hit this next week um, of course you know I really like to stay away from this sort of like uh, what's called like crystal ball type shit because I, I think it's just silly and it's disingenuous because it can't really be done over time but a lot of things lining up here and um, I do think that yesterday was 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 distribution I think it was I think it was very uh, very likely distribution in fact is pretty fucking obviously distribution um, uh, so yeah uh, let's go check out um, do we want to check out the dollar index dollar index closed the week extremely strong extremely fucking strong um i still do not understand what the what like <laughs> explain explain this explain this one fucking cryptocurrency anarchists um who believe that bitcoin is going to go to the moon while the traditional world collapses um it seems to me like the dollar is actually the one that's holding up the best we have a literally multi-decade falling wedge being resolved to the upside and uh, yes we are at you know short-term resistance right here and maybe it takes its time going through but ultimately there is a measure move pointing much 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 higher so we might actually see hyperinflation of the of the u.s dollar in terms of price action which long term, you know, is there any reason to believe that it doesn't get up to this level? Not for right now. A, a golden cross running over here seems to be respected extremely well. I mean, look at that. That that's what you'd expect to see uh, to kind of confirm that all the bots and algos are on the buy side of this. And I, and I believe that they are. Um, let's go check out Trisha Marks uh, Spy. How, uh, how did Spy close the week? Terribly, terribly back on the lows. Um, this is this uh, this is getting like worse than uh this is just getting worse. <laughs> this is just getting worse, man. Uh, we couldn't even hold on to our our, uh, our December 2018 lows. Remember when Bitcoin came down to 3,100? So I was making new lows below that. So I don't think it's too far-fetched to think that Bitcoin will come back down to that level and actually break it longer term, um, especially seen as traditional markets are, are, are doing exactly that. And uh, again, on the macro scale, they are still correlated, can change. And this would be, this would this would be a great way to confirm a change of behavior on the macro. If Bitcoin gets back above 7,000 and closes, especially like a weekly above there, but even like a daily would probably make me consider this. Um, but if, if it were able to do this, and then SPY were essentially hanging down below this region. Yeah, I do think that we'd see bifurcation and we would see decoupling and they would no longer be correlated and they might even be negatively correlated at that time, which is what you actually really want as a hedge. You don't want no correlation. You want negative correlation for fuck's sake. Like people don't even understand. It's not people. Like obviously people listening, tuning into this content are probably a little bit more, a little bit more educated or maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just yanking your chain. But, uh, but I, I would hope, so. I, I do think so because we do seem to have a pretty damn good uh, community here, which makes this really fucking fun for myself actually um but the thing with that is is that it, it would really put it would what you, what you want is negative correlation on a hedge because well if one goes up you want the other one to go down you know or and if you want and if and if one goes down you want the other one to go up that's what you want in a hedge you don't i mean no correlation could be useful but it's not as useful as a direct correlation in the time that you actually need to hedge otherwise it's like okay you might as well just play the same asset against each other which makes very which makes the most sense to me it's like if you want to hedge just fucking 
take a take a futures uh, position in the opposite direction or, or trade options against it. Um, anyways, traditional markets having a, a, an absolutely abysmal close. I do think extremely likely we will see that next target to the downside at uh, 220 ish. Um, hit anywhere between 215 and 220 ish area. That's the next area that I could have, or sorry, that I have marked off as a potential bottom. We did not hit our our reversal uh, target targeted area yesterday. We needed to trade above, well, basically above this trend line. And uh, but I really wanted to see above um, what was it Tuesday's high? I think it was. I think uh, it was this high right here. It was this high right here from 17th of March. So yeah, a few days ago. Or no, 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 no. It was yeah, yeah. It it uh, it was that one. It was that one. Although we could use this one right here as well. It was it's it's equally as important on the nineteenth. So that was Thursday, uh, right around two forty seven and a quarter essentially. Um, instead, we get a rejection right there and back down. So. So I think that we're going to be looking at continuation, especially coming in on Monday uh, to close. Like the classic thing is that when you close markets down on a Friday, like on a, on a big down as well for like the whole week, not always, but extremely likely Monday, you will see some more panic selling and further continuation of the downside. There is obviously, you know, the good old turnaround Tuesday, which actually does work. I fucking hate that sort of shit, but it actually does work more often than it does not. Um, uh, so maybe, you know, maybe we see a potential bottom going around there. But what I do think is very, very, very likely is we're going to see more continuation coming into Monday. Um, I do not think that we've seen the lows on traditional markets. Um, I think it's going to have another chance in the low or sorry, in like the 215 to 220-ish region. But I think that that's even quite unlikely to begin with. Sorry, I don't mean to hit the mic right now. Um, but I think that that's quite likely to... Uh, quite unlikely to begin with to even be the ultimate low because what's really going on here is we have never seen just like bitcoin's never seen a macro low without bullish divergence on at the very least a daily uh traditional marks have never seen a macro low with at least bullish divergence on a weekly um for example you know 2008 you're probably familiar with this one right not so long ago a little bit more than 10 years now but uh, i'm sure most people are were probably around for this one um bullish divergence uh, three three drives of bullish divergence on the on the low beautiful uh this one was not a ma uh, was was not a macro cycle low right here obviously but well actually it was no it uh, uh yes what the fuck are you saying crown of course it was jesus christ and we have we actually only have two drives on this one but um good enough is good enough and forces us back up and then we also have this one right here uh not necessarily it, it was it was a macro cycle low to be fair um i do remember the trading this one actually in 2015 everyone was like super scared here too um and what do you know uh major bullish divergence actually three drives once again so right now we don't we don't have we don't even have two drives which is like the very least case um now you can see that it's going to be very easy to make a uh, bullish divergence on the weekly rsi but it's going to imply that first we are probably going to go lower seeing as friday looks like continuation friday close looks like continuation um and then you know we're going to get some sort of like you know nice bounce uh probably for the short term medium term and then come back down and actually put in another low and that's when we actually will get divergence but that would imply that we're going to get lower prices probably even lower than like 215 or 220 ish region so Friday's closes made this one look even even worse. Um, I think the monthly jewel had like a phenomenal sell signal. Yeah, it had a pretty damn good one coming in from uh, January. So right, not at the uh, not. Uh, it actually didn't get the top. It got it got the uh, it got the monthly before the top. So if you would have shorted that one, you would have had to have waited quite a bit. It's required a, a balls of steel and a lot of patience, as traditional marks were making new all time highs. But now playing out in your favor pretty damn well. And we also have three drives of bearish divergence on the monthly RSI. So. Just looking at the monthly right here i do want to see where the cyan 89 is uh are we actually breaking through that right now because that would be that's terrifying yep we are um okay nice all right so just look away and we're gonna pretend, pretend that that didn't happen uh i do think that traditional marks are gonna be um you're gonna you're gonna see another flood to the downside if this thing breaks below 210 region um, especially on like a higher time frame close i mean this, this is just getting worse and worse um so yeah pretty fucking bad pretty fucking bad probably gonna see continuation on monday maybe you know and, and then we'll and then we'll come back and reassess but maybe a bounce on tuesday maybe we get lucky and put in it put a nice local low there and then we can actually get to work on the next drive of divergence but um it's not looking that likely at least for now um going back to bitcoin i think it's time to start to wrap this bitch up because this video has already been about an hour long and uh i'm hungry as fuck so what do we have here Going back to Bitcoin, sorry, let me let me go back on over here. Um, wrapping up the lower term timeframes, uh, let me get rid of this trend line. <clears throat> 
um, if Bitcoin does close below, let's call it like 60, uh, 60, 50 ish region on a more conservative estimate or 61, 50 ish region on a more aggressive estimate. Um, I would look for at the very least uh, 58, 50 to get tested again and probably a small bounce there and then and likely continuation back down to uh, the middle of the 5000s, about 54 to 5500 ish region, somewhere right around here. Um, by the same token, if Bitcoin does hold it up right here, and just fails to close these four hour doors below, especially like uh, 60, 50 ish region, you know, could it reaccumulate in this region and pop back up and test around 65 or 6,600 region right here? Yeah, possible. It would be a nice shakeout move as well for the over aggressive shorts. Um, but as long as Bitcoin is below this blue box right here, the 65, 50 ish one, my bias is overall bearish. And I do think that I do, I do feel very strongly that we will head back down to at the very least the middle of the 5,000s and probably even lower than that to the 51 to 4,800 ish number down around here um, over this next week of price action. Probably Probably the weekend's going to be, you know, more or less quiet. I don't think that too much is going to be going on right now. But, you know, again, my timing on these sorts of things is, is not not what I feel confident on. It's the it's the price points um, and uh, in critical levels that, that I like to refer to them as like triggering triggering levels. So. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, I would switch around to uh, to a bullish bias. Once again, if we did start to close four hour doodles above 65, 50 ish region, I think that's quite unlikely. But you know, should always talk about that. And, uh, and if that were to happen, I'd look for a quick retest of yesterday's high and then probably extension all the way up to, you know, low 7,000 like 73 to 7,400 ish region. And maybe we even could be looking at a macro cycle low once again, but I think that that's very unlikely. I think that, um, you know, I, I think yesterday was very obviously distribution. And I think that, um, and I think that people looking for this to be done and Bitcoin to just go to the fucking moon because hedge is, going to be humbled a little bit perhaps or maybe i get humbled myself which can very much can very easily happen as well anyways i'm going to be signing off right now um i'll start a twitch stream uh, in a little bit uh, assuming that uh, assuming that i feel okay i need to still take some pain pills so we'll see we'll see after that but uh, but other than that i want to say thank you for tuning in once again um it's been an it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you uh, on this very one-sided conversation i'll be back on uh either later with the twitch stream or tomorrow for some more uh, video analysis take care and until next time